morning. I welcome my viewers from across the globe today. Thank you for being part of our show. Uh, this morning we'll be talking about TB Joshua. This man has been in the news for a couple of days now because a few days ago the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, uh, made a video about his life and the activities uh, going on in the Synagogue Church of All Nations. That's uh, T.B. Joshua's church. So today the question we're asking is, who is T.B. Joshua? Is he a man of God or a worker of iniquity? And now we start by looking at what Jesus, the Son of God, said to his disciples. He asked them a question in Matthew 16, verse 13. There the Bible says that when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? In verse 14, And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And then Jesus asked them again, but whom do ye say that I am? And in verse 16, Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. The issue of identity is very important. The issue of identity is very important. God has never hidden his identity from man. So Peter responded and said, Thou art Christ the Son of the Living God. The same statement, incidentally, was made by the centurion at the crucifixion of Christ. The Bible records again in Matthew 27, verse 54, it says, Now the centurion and those who were with him, watching Jesus, when they saw the earthquake and the things that were done, feared exceedingly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. So the last few days, in the light of the BBC documentary that was published concerning T.B. Joshua and uh, uh, his uh, ministry, his church, there has been heated debate all over the media, both traditional media and social media, about who T.B. Joshua really was. Some of his followers are out daggers drawn, so to speak, to defend the image of the man. Just like Peter did the night that Jesus was arrested, he drew out his sword. And the, the Bible says he cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest. So, others also, I mean the critics of T.B. Joshua, they are adamant that this man cannot be a man of God. I also want to say, I want to confirm that I've watched the three series of this BBC documentary. And I must say that the revelation in that documentary are overwhelming. I am making this video not as a content creator, but as a minister of the gospel of Christ. I am not a member of the synagogue church. I have never been a member and I've never found any form of inspiration in the teachings of T.B. Joshua. Actually, I consider his teachings very incoherent. It's something I just am not able to comprehend. There's no sequence to what he says. And I also want to say that there is nothing in the BBC documentary which the church in Nigeria has not been aware of the last 30 or 40 years. The reason why this documentary has generated so much debate is because it was done, it was published by the BBC. Now, it's not for nothing that Joshua is not a member of the Christian Association of Nigeria. The Christian Association of Nigeria, that's the umbrella body of the Christian church in Nigeria. Now, you may ask me, my viewers may ask me why, because this Christian body in Nigeria could not trace the antecedents of T.B. Joshua. His history 
is shrouded in mystery, and a number of pastors in Nigeria are ardent critics of T.B. Joshua. So there is nothing new in the BBC documentary. Some of these things revealed have long been known in Nigeria. And then the word of God declares that a man's work will be tried in fire and in the process reveal what manner of works the man has done. So T.B. Joshua's works will be exposed to scriptural scrutiny, I would say, in order for us to determine if this man was real or fake. Was he a servant of God or a servant of Satan? Now, it is obvious that a man can be a worker of miracles, and yet he is not a man of God. He could be a worker of iniquity. I want to refer to scriptures once again. In the book of Acts, chapter 8, we come across a scenario where God exposed the works of a certain sorcerer. The Bible says in Acts chapter 8, verse 5, it said, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying out with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that for of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. So what's the Lord saying here? It is possible for a man to work signs and wonders using sorcery. And that man may even become great in the process. People will flock to him, believing that the man is the real deal. The people in Samaria said, this man is the great power from God. That's exactly what we have been here in the last few days. Now further, in that same chapter of the Bible, in verse 18, the Bible says, And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give also, give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. So the man, that sorcerer, offered money in order to buy the power of God, but the apostles rebuked him. So it means that it's possible to buy power with money. And Jesus, the Son of God, he validated this position in Matthew 7 from verse 22. He says there, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? Verse 23, and I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. So the fact that one is a miracle worker, one does signs and wonders, does not qualify that person to be called a man of God. The fact that one is a prophet and is able to prophesy does not qualify that person to be called a man of God. Jesus knows all those who are workers of iniquity, but who operate using his name. Now we go further. In Matthew 24, 24, concerning the last days, and these are the last days, Jesus said, for there shall arise false Christs, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And that's exactly what is happening now. Even the very elect might be deceived by what is going on right now. Now, there is something about occultism which many believers are not aware of. 
Many are gullible because they do not even bother to search or to seek for the truth. Now, truth is constant and is not subject to any kind of manipulation. Occultism and other forms of satanic practices, they have been with humanity for a long time. Yes, they have been with humanity from the beginning of times. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, and I read from verse 18 to 12, the Bible says, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Verse 11, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Verse 12, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect before the Lord thy God. So, man has been given to all forms of satanic experimentation. And I declare by the Holy Ghost that witchcraft is satanic, necromancy is satanic, consulting with charmers is satanic, the practice of divination is satanic, observation of times is satanic, the practice of enchantment, that is satanic, casting of spells, the practice of sorcery, all these are satanic practices. And the Lord said, these are an abomination unto me. And that's why the Lord commanded that all these things must not be found among his people. So what are we saying here? Do not be surprised at some people that parade themselves today as men of God are into these things. Now let us go back to the BBC documentary. Is it possible that some 25 or 30 or so people could be bought with money to come to the public to tell lies? I don't think so. There has to be an element of truth in what they have stated and what the statements they volunteered to the BBC. Now, but let's leave that aside. What about certain practices in that church that are contrary to scriptures? I am talking about followers of TB Joshua being asked to purchase what they refer to as anointed water. Where in the Bible did Jesus speak about anointed water? What is anointed water in the first instance? We all know about anointing oil, which Jesus permitted in his ministry. For example, in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 13, the Bible says, And they cast out many devils, and anointed with oil many that were sick, and healed them. So how can some, someone now tell you that there's something called anointed water, and you, you believe in you cannot believe such things. Now, what about the manipulation of facts and deliberate falsehood peddled when many souls perished in that premises, when a defective complex collapsed within the premises of that church in Lagos? T.B. Joshua told his gullible followers that a plane hovered over the building many times, and that was the cause of the collapse. Now, my question is, did the pilot of that plane, did he drop bombs to obliterate the building, to obliterate the complex? How can a man lie deliberately? Now, I know that Nigeria has a long history of collapsed buildings, and these things happen because of lack of adherence to building regulations. People just do whatever they like. So the structure that collapsed in the, in the, within the premises of Joshua's church was defective. And why can't a man of God, who is worthy salt, acknowledge this and be remorseful, tender an apology for the sake of the dead? And there were many people that died in that tragedy. But instead, he told his followers that he himself was the target of, of whoever caused it complex 
to collapse. How far can a man go with that kind of greed? The inquest into the collapse of the complex recommended prosecution. Why is it that up to today, the members, or the, I would say the leaders of the church have not been prosecuted? Now let us draw our show to a close today. A few months after T.B. Joshua passed, Reverend Chris Okotie, senior pastor of the Household of God Church in Lagos, he did an exposition in a video titled The Truth About T.B. Joshua. Now, that video is on YouTube, and I recommend that video to my viewers today. Just type The Truth About T.B. Joshua, Reverend Chris Okotie. You'll find it there. And I want to thank my viewers for watching. And if you found this content useful, consider to subscribe, to like, or to share in order to promote the work that we do. You may also consider to support us via uh, membership or through a one-off purchase of what is referred to as super thanks. And to my viewers, my subscribers, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate your support. Bye for now.